two cars start traveling from different points and in opposite directions in a circuit race at a constant speed how much faster is one car going than the other how much faster is one car going than the other look at the statement statement 1 says the distances from a to b b to c and c to a are the same and statement 2 says the cars cross for the first time at point a the second time at point b the third time at point c and the fourth time again at point a so basically we have to find out which of these statements are sufficient to get the answer to the given question right the question which says there are two cars which start traveling from different points and in opposite directions in a circuit race in a circuit race at a constant speed now what do you mean by all these points that have been underlined there are two cars starts from different points they have started in opposite directions right they are moving in the opposite directions in a circuit race circuit race meaning a closed loop right it's a closed loop and at a constant speed and it is traveling uh, and and both the cars are traveling at a constant speed means what they are not changing their speeds like for example if the first car travels at 60 km per hour it will travel at the same speed throughout the journey if the second one travels at let's say 75 km per hour it will travel at 75 only it won't change its speed right the speed will be constant we have to find out how much faster how much faster is one car going than the other how much faster is one car going than the other so look at the statement now statement 1 alone let's let's try with statement 1 alone the statement 1 tells us that the distances from a to b b to c and c to a are the same now immediately you should come to a conclusion that one alone is not sufficient because we don't even know what a b and c are all we know is that there are three points and he says a to b b to c c to a the distances are same now where are these points we don't know and there's nothing else given in that statement so statement 1 alone clearly is not sufficient look at statement 2 alone statement 2 says the cars cross for the first time at point a the second time at point b the third time at point c and the fourth time again at point a now again you should immediately say that statement 2 alone is not sufficient why is it so because the only data that we have from statement 2 here is that the cars cross for the first time at point a second time they cross at point b and the third time they cross at point c but where are points a b and c is still not known to us and then the fourth time again at point a the fourth time again at point a here will to follow so what are points a b and c is not known how much is the distances between point a point b point b point c point c point a that also is not known to us all we know is they first cross at a then they cross at b and third time they'll cross at c so that will not help us find out how much faster is one car going than the other so independently these statements fail right individually statement 1 alone is not sufficient and then statement 2 alone is also not sufficient let us now go for the combination what happens when you combine the two statements remember the classical rule when you are answering questions from data sufficiency is that you have to go for the combination you have to combine the two statements if and only if the statements fail to give the answer independently right so let's now go for the combination what happens when you combine when you combine there are two points that we have that there there are two i mean there are two pieces of information that we have right one says that distances from a to b b to c and c to a are same and second one says that the cars cross at point a for the first time point b for the second time and point c for the third time and again at point a for the fourth time so what can we do about it let's assume this is the closed loop this is the closed circuit right we know that this is a closed circuit so let's say this is a closed circuit now how do we know it is circular it may be circular or triangular or rectangular or oval or you know let's whichever shape you want it to be right it's a circuit race it's a closed loop right let's let's consider the first point see we know that there are three points here a b and c according to statement 1 the distances from a to b b to c and c to a are same so let's assume these are the three points 1 2 and 3 let's say this is point a point b and point c so distance from a to b is same as distance from b to c is same as the distance from c to a right these three parts are equal these three portions are equal are you able to follow a to b portion b to c portion and the c to a portion all these three are equal this piece of information is given in statement 1 that the distances from a to b b to c and c to a are equal right so basically you are dividing the closed circuit into three parts right even if let's say the track is in this shape what happens you will divide the track into three parts something like this okay three parts right uh whatever be the shape you will divide it into three parts right so it could be like this let's say 
so a b and c so distance from a to b is equal to b to c is equal to c to a whatever be the shape right there are three legs to it basically right now statement 2 tells us that the cars uh, see what do we know from the question that there are two cars which start traveling from different points and in opposite direction so they start traveling from different points and in opposite directions so if one car goes in this direction the other car would go in this direction right and they are traveling at constant speeds they have started from different points but when you look at statement 2 statement 2 tells us that the first time they will cross each other at point a first time they'll cross each other at point a second time at point b second time they'll cross each other at point b understand let's assume that the distance from a to b is d the distance from b to c is d and the distance from c to a is also d all three are equal now look at it let's see when they have crossed each other for the first time at point a so they are at this point let's say they have crossed here right first instance they are at this point right so c1 is going in this direction and the car c2 the car c2 which is also at point a is going in this direction they are, they are traveling in opposite directions right we know that they are traveling in opposite directions so c1 and c2 have crossed at point a and they are going in different directions now what happens the second time they will be crossing each other at point two point b second time they'll be crossing each other at point b so what happens if you observe c1 will cover this distance and it will come at point b c1 has covered how much it has covered d c2 has covered how much c2 by the time c1 reaches point b by the time c1 reaches point b c2 has also reached point b and c2 came in the opposite direction you are able to follow c1 covered from a to b c2 covered from a to c to b so c2 travels in this direction it covers this d and then it covers this d and reaches this point so if you observe the time taken by c1 to travel d the time taken by c1 to travel d is equal to the time taken by c2 to travel 2d you are able to follow c1 covers d c2 covers 2d to reach which point to reach point b yes or no if you want i can show it in a different color just for the sake of clear understanding right? c1 covers d it reaches here c2 covers this d and then this d to reach this point in the same time time taken by c1 to reach this point b from point a and time taken by c2 to reach point b from point a same again if you look at the next leg what happens the third time they cross each other at point c let's let's take a third instance right third time they cross each other at point c so what happens now both the cars are in point b right c1 is here c2 is also here c1 continues to travel like this and c2 would travel in this direction right so what happens c1 now next time they are going to meet at point c so c1 will cover this distance c1 will cover this distance from b to c how much has c1 covered c1 has covered d in the same time what will c2 do the car c2 it started from b it covers d then it covers d and it comes back here it, it reaches this point so c2 has covered how much 2d in the same time and they meet at what point they meet at point c and they meet at point c again what happens from c the car start moving in opposite direction one car will cover 2d the other car will cover only d and they'll reach the point a and then again point b and point c and so on so this continues to happen so basically if you observe always the time taken by one car observe the time taken by one car to cover d in in the same time the other car covers 2d the time in which c1 covers d c2 covers 2d the time is same time is same right if the time is same can we say speed is proportional to distance yes so can i say speed of c1 by speed of uh, c2 is equal to distance covered by c1 by distance covered by c2 what is the distance covered by c1 d distance covered by c2 2d so basically the speeds are in the ratio of 1 is to 2 if the speed of one car is let's say x the speed of other car would be 2x now go back to the question. So what have we used? We have used statement 2 also. So by using 1 and 2 together, we are able to find out the ratio of their speeds. I can say that their speeds are in the ratio of 1 is to 2. If one car travels at, let's say, 40 kilometers per hour, the other car would travel at 80 kilometers per hour. Yes or no? 1 is to 2 is the ratio. So how much faster is one car going than the other? I can say one car is traveling twice as fast as the other. Yes or no? One car is traveling twice as fast as the other whatever will be the absolute values i mean it can be 60 120 it can be 35 70 it can be 10 20 it can be 20 40 it can be 25 50 it can be 32 64 but always we will find that one car travels twice as fast as the other so how much faster is one car going the other going than the other it is going twice as fast as the other and how are you able to decide this by using both the statements one and two together so your answer to this question should be both 
वन एंड टू टुगेदर आर सफिशियंट बोथ वन एंड टू टुगेदर आर सफिशियंट राइट right? 